I trace that. This gun's pretty small because it's 25 caliber. And so I shortened it up because they don't need that much trigger guard, really. And the fact the gun's so small and delicate. So that's what I'm going to make. So you're bending this wire to determine the overall length. Yeah, I'm getting material length roughly. That's what I'm after right now. Let's get a material length. And this doesn't have to be perfect. This is just get me in the ballpark. So basically just off that kink. And we can just straighten that out. So you can see that, well, you can see we're just off that kink, so we need six and a half, seven inches of material to make that up. So if we just want to make it out of flat stock, that's nine inches, so we can shear that up. don't get it right we can always go back and go again that's not bad okay now that back end we want to be a bigger radius so we'll switch out mandrels not quite 90 in that back end I don't think I mean it probably almost would work but yeah. just not quite enough there to do what I want. So. so we'll just stick this back in here. Oh, okay. And use it to unbend it. Yeah. And just pull it open. Oh, exactly. And it's not perfect, so I'm going to go fix it, but it's close. I don't mind the hammer marks for what I'm making. You see how it's crooked? Mm -hmm. Is that from the bending? Yeah, just not quite right. And it doesn't matter a lot because that's all going to get filed anyway. Right. But the closer you are, the closer you are, you know. So we want that to come around there and have about that much room for our finger in front so we can get in there so our tangency is right there so we want to stretch that out some because my goal is to put a screw right here into here okay so because i don't have it. much room of wood wise with the ramrod hole in there, because this gun's so small. I mean, it's been like working on a twig. And so you're you're really tight on space. And so I'm gonna attach my trigger guard to my trigger plate, because there'll be another bolt come down from the tang that'll catch my trigger. Okay. Okay? Right behind the one that the uh, that bolt's into. So we should be all right once we get I'm gonna pull this in a little bit. Okay. So now we'll just come around. Just try not to let that pull in. We don't want a full 90 there. And we're kind of between what I drew and what they had. So let's see how that looks for our trigger. A little longer than I'd like. So I'm gonna tighten that bend up and then take a little out of the back of it 
So what I did is I pulled the bend this way. And by doing that, then it allows me, it, in a sense, it shortened the trigger guard. So I'm going to actually probably pull it in just a little bit more. I'm going to go take a little of this out first. So traditionally, would have this been heated and forged? Yeah, or yeah. I'm guessing it would largely have been cold worked. This thin a material, I mean, you could heat it, but it just makes all your life more difficult because you're, everything's hot, I can't hold it, right. you know, and things. And I think these thin uh, Southern Mountain Rifle style trigger guards, I think they largely just bent up. They're always made out of thin steel, and I think that's, they were just bent up. Let's see, we're real close. Open that up just a bit. We're about right on our drawing. If we're on our drawing, then we're on our triggers. I think we're pretty darn close there. What I've got is I'm just a just a touch past 90. Now it's getting about where I want it. I just want to open that up just a little bit there because I I don't want that to be overly tight. I'm going to make it just a touch long. You can always shorten it. You can always shorten it. You can put it back on, but it's not near as much fun. Long. I think I'm going to leave that long until I get this other piece in it. And then I can just knock that off on a belt or whatever. Okay, so that's about where the connection takes place. So now we got to make this guy. Now is that tail all one piece? Or is this one piece and this one piece? And they're they were made both ways. Okay. Some guys brazed them together. Some guys folded them. And then worked it. You get two material thicknesses either way. Mm -hmm. So some guys folded it and forged welded it. Um, I'm not going to forge weld this one. So this guy's going to go through there. So we want to leave a little extra. And then this guy, you just can kind of swing that up. And we can trim this both ways, obviously. So mm -hmm. what I want to do initially. So I'm going to make it, I got plenty of material back here. So I'm just going to move this down here and I'm going to bring that back on itself. We'll heat that up just with the torch and then fold it over on itself. And if I'd had longer material, I'd have probably lit a forge up and done this, but this is just kind of a one-off quick and dirty. Yeah, I think if you're making like half a dozen at a time. Yeah, I'd have a forge going so I could, some of this I could do quick, a lot quicker that way. But. Now I got that kind of where I want it, but I'm going to heat it up and actually pull that out into a radius so I don't file material away. Okay. So what I did there is I, my bend, I pushed my bend forward. I'm going to push this corner. Well, I don't know. Let me push this corner back, actually. I'll cool this off one more time here. And so when I get this to shape, I don't file away where the metal joins. It's thin, but it's still a joint. And that keeps it strong. Yeah. You'll even see these originals where there's a rivet throughout here. Hmm. I've seen them done both ways. Now we're just going to push this corner back a little bit. So we really, hopefully, we get this right. We won't have to do much of anything. So I got a nice radius there and I'll just nip these corners off. I mean, sometimes you would see them maybe left on, but I'm going to nip them off. But 
they were thin out there, but I think we'll be all right. I don't know if this will work or not. That's half the fun. Yeah. Making something like this is always a mind game in the beginning. You, Cause you gotta figure out all the things it's trying to do. Cause see what we got going on is we want this guy going on down the gun. So this is where we are now. We're gonna look at our drawing. And this guy is this guy. So we're a little big. We want that smaller. So we'll heat that up and we'll just tighten that curl. Okay. And we gotta get this guy going the other way. And that's the handy thing here, the torch. Is I can really decide where I want my heat. It's not too bad. Kind of see where we are to the drawing. So we're pretty good. This guy gets a mild bow and we can hammer that in. So I think we're pretty happy. But the question is, how strong is that? It's pretty strong. I think it's, I think it'll be fine. Good deal. It's trigger guard. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I think I'm going to see if I can run some solder down into that just to braze that together there it just kind of worries me a little i don't want this to break so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn that around because what i want to do well i might be able to let's try it this way is you when you're brazing or soldering what you want to do is you want to put your heat on and then get the heat to suck the braze or solder to it that's the key to this whole process you want to get it to pull it down in there There it goes. By doing that the way I did that, my heat down in there, it pulled that braze and uh, flux both to the heat. Okay. And that's what you're doing the whole time. You're getting that to run to that heat. You're putting that fire brick up there just protects everything so that have to worry about it. My guess is we got a decent brace job. Yeah, see that doesn't want to open up at all. Good. That's what we wanted. That's what we wanted. Okay. Right. So we're gonna cool that off. Surprising. Now, does dunking that affect that braze at all? No. Now, if it was still red and you dunked it, it, it would it fracture would affect things. But if, if metal's black in color and you cool it, you quench it, it doesn't do anything. Okay. To it. The molecules aren't excited at that point, and so it doesn't, nothing happens. Nothing happens at all. Okay. So, to me, this trigger guard looks backwards, but it's the way a lot of trigger guards are made. Okay, so we've got our little curl here, and we've got our bow piece. We need to get an arc in that so we can tweak that in on the bender. Now, do they make cast iron mounted? Yeah, yeah, they make cast guards. ones. Yeah. Max just wanted this one. He wanted this particular trigger guard. And, I mean, you know, if you're doing a, taking the time to build a custom rifle, then, you know, what's a, a little bit more time to do a custom trigger guard. Yeah. I mean, really, you know. And this gun, there's not a lot of hardware on it. I mean, there's no butt plate. 
No, there's no butt plate. I mean, it's a, it's is a there, straight iron mounted gun. So is there a side plate? No, no. We're, we're just doing two yeah. small extensions at the um, screws. I think it's what we're going to end up doing. So. so a little more metal work on this gun isn't really much at all. No. <laughs> no, it's not like you're really making a lot of stuff. A little too much bow in there, which is what I figured I would have. So I'll take some of that out. And sometimes it's kind of handy to over bend something and then take it back. Because you get a, you, sometimes you get a nicer um, bend than you will otherwise. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is shape these two. And then once they're shaped, then we, and uh, kind of ready, then we'll put it together. And once we put it together, then we'll finish it up. But I can kind of lay this on here to kind of get an idea how much bigger we are than they, than it is. I mean, we match pretty good this direction, but we're, considerably wider than they are. So what we've got to do is thin all this down And does that file work or are you getting on the grinder? And... I'm just going to get on the belt grinder. I mean you could file it down if that's if if what you had was files and that's what I would use is the files obviously but I have the luxury of a belt grinder and I'm going to I'm going to use it. Now, here we are at where do we want this back screw in this. And our gun's solid back in here because you can see our trigger assembly is only that long. So we know back in here we're back to solid wood. So I can, I'm just going to kind of go by the drawing on that. And if it was not, if I had a longer trigger bar or something, then I'd want to pay attention to where I put that screw hole. But I don't really have to watch that because I'm my gun's not that way. My screw's gonna go in here somewhere, so. Then this guy here at the front end the main difference I'm going to do up here is I'm going to leave just a little more meat here than they did. And I'm a little shorter, I guess, than they were, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that. My screw is just going to be back in that neck of this a little bit. And since he liked this trigger guard with the diamonds, I kind of thought that I would do the side extensions for the two lock screws, put a little diamond on those too yeah. out of steel. Just, you know, a little something to do. Keeps that theme going. Yeah, it keeps the theme going. I saw one the other day where a guy had uh, um, done his ramrod barrels and he cut a little diamond out of the bottom of those. Oh, so, really? The gun was standing there like this. You looked at the ramrod. There was a diamond cut out of the That's cool. barrels. And I, I thought about doing that maybe. I don't know. How far Max wants to follow that theme. But I said the main thing on this gun that's kind of a headache is it's so small. And getting all this right is difficult. The challenge. Um. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rough this in and then we're going to go put it on, up against the gun and kind of look at it and say, does this match this gun or not? It didn't take any time at all. Now here you can kind of put them in place, maybe get a little better idea of, of what we're looking at. This one still needs trimmed to length, obviously, mm -hmm. but that's okay. It doesn't matter right now. Nice. Oh. Done. 
you can kind of look at this and see how close we are. See, we already see this needs a little more bend. I'll trim a little off of there. This guy's a little warm still. <clears throat> but we can kind of see about where we are. That guy needs brought up a little bit. But it gives you an idea of where, every, <clears throat> where everybody's at from this direction. See, it's way too heavy for this gun. It's too mm -hmm. wide. And that's what we want to know. We want to know that. And you can't know that until you look at that, you know, on the gun that you're working on. Okay, so we're going to file on the... So I'm going to pull that neck in there a little bit. We can make this look thinner too by other means. About right where we want it. Well, I think I left my triggers downstairs. I can go get them. Or did I? Did I bring the... No, you didn't. I didn't bring the book either, did I? And what I'm looking at here is... I want to get my triggers there in a little bit, and we can drill a hole in. And then I can mount that to a block, and I can do this okay. part here. So I'm going to move on to the tail end now. Since that side's pretty well done. This has got some work left in it. Okay. Do that that way. See, this guy's, I'm a little too high, but I'm a little too high. That's all I can say right now. So, that guy about right there on out. And here, we're close, but we want to skinny this up some more and then. So that wants to go right up there about, I don't know, I got a little too much material right there, maybe. I'm going to get this kind of stuck together and then we're going to see how this looks. Can you explain what you just did since I... Yeah, so what I did here is, is I made a little mortise in the back of the bow here for the trigger guard and I got a little tenon there, fits in that mortise. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go in and we're going to countersink this side of it so there's a bevel and then we can peen this into that bevel. And that'll lock it together and then we'll take it downstairs and we'll braise it and that'll put it all together. And with a little braise on there that'll never come apart. I don't think it'd come apart from the rivet myself. So there that is. Peened together. It's got to be pretty solid. Oh, it's solid as a rock. See, and I think, in all honesty, I don't even know what you need to braise that. I mean, that's that's solid as a rock. And to me, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Tenon and that on there, you know. It's hard to be. It's simple. Yeah. Riveting that on there. That's just that's just cool. So all I'm going to do is go up and round this bow some. Because that should be rounded a little bit. And then I got to get this guy to lay right to the stock. And then I can drill holes and start getting ready to put everybody together. So the trigger guard was made up out of two pieces. This piece here goes to here, and then this piece goes in. I cut a a rectangular tenon through here and then peen that back onto that just so it's riveted on. This I folded and then soldered or brazed actually in here as well just to make it stronger. And then the trigger guard just comes back but this is all one piece and this is this, the other piece. And so we started out with material it's basically this thickness you can see right here and all of it's actually still that thickness. I didn't really thin it down but what I did was thin the edges like you do on a table or a chair seat, the edge of a table, and that gives it an appearance of being much thinner, but it keeps the strength. So the trigger guard is still really nice and strong, because this piece is really narrow right here. 
that by doing that, just those edges, taking a file and just doing some file work on that, you can file that down. You get a really nice looking light trigger guard when it's actually not. It's still the same thickness it was. And it works out really nice for the gun. This screw here actually goes right into the trigger plate. So it's steel to steel here. And then this screw back here is just in the wood. But the gun itself, both tang bolts go through into the trigger plate. And then I did that so the wrist would be really strong because the gun's really small. But I've got nice grain here. You can see my grain structure running through my wrist. So I'm pretty happy with the, with the strength of the wrist. But I made it stronger by putting those two bolts all the way through and capturing that trigger plate in there too. So I'm steel to steel on my screws. So on the gun for browning, this is what I used, which was Wildcat Valley Browning Solution. Um, Jerry Eater started making this 100 years ago, or, <laughs> and his son still sells it there at Flintlocks Incorporated. But uh, it's a good browning solution. I applied it over, I don't know, three days. I think I put six coats on everything. Basically set them outside the shop on damp mornings or nights there and let them set out overnight and brown up. And, and everything took on a really nice brown, so looks really nice. Nice, consistent color on the gun. The screws I did, uh, those are all just fire blued, which is typically how I do my screws. I like that contrast of that blue screw head versus the brown on the gun. And even if I'd French grade the parts or blued the parts, I'd probably still fire blued my screws. I think it's a good look. Do the screw on the lock too, that down the handle.